I do not believe in coincidences. I do not believe in luck. I do not believe in fate. I do not. Philadelphia, last two years, is 14-2 and two in one-score games. The Bills are 8-9. and nine. Why? They both have great quarterbacks, both have good enough rosters, both have very smartly owned franchises. Why the disparity? Because the Eagles, as I've said before, have an absolute offensive identity, and the Bills have a really talented quarterback. That's not an identity. They asked Josh Allen to save the day, and sometimes he can. He's a remarkable player, and sometimes he can't. And in fourth quarters, in crisis, in close games, it's not enough. Seattle, defensive coach. Steelers, defensive coach. Chargers, defensive coach. Buffalo, defensive coach. What are their offensive identities? Eagles have an offensive coach. Josh Allen is now 0-6 in overtime in his career. You think it's a coincidence? I don't buy it. I don't buy fate. I don't buy luck. I don't buy coincidence. Three times this year, the Bills have faced an elite quarterback. Last night, Cincinnati when Burrow was healthy and the Jags. And they're 0-3. Why would that be? Because when they face a team that has a quarterback that is at least in the stratosphere of Josh Allen's talent, Burrow, Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence, then the details matter. And the Bills run game... Oh, it's a little better this year, but still incredibly Josh Allen dependent. He had both their rushing touchdowns last night and half their yards. And once they get to the red zone where Philadelphia can beat you so many ways, it's all about Josh Allen making a play. That's what Mahomes has. Mahomes has the advantage of a coaching staff that can rebuild his offensive line in one off season, that can rebuild the defense in a year and a half, that can rebuild a receiving core. Buffalo, six years in, their run game is still overly dependent on one guy, especially in the red zone, Josh Allen. Philadelphia in the first half played very lethargically, very flat, and gave the Bills twice a turnover and a short field, and Philadelphia led. But in the second half, when Philadelphia forced the Bills to drive down the field. Philadelphia had to drive down the field, too. Then it looked like the Eagles were the better team, and they clearly have a better identity. 14-2 and two, the last two years in one-score games. I don't want to hear about officials. I don't want to hear about luck. I don't want to hear about coincidences. I don't want to about the league is rigged. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. They don't want the Cowboys to win Super Bowl last, thir last 30 years. That's what the league is. They, they, they don't want the Packers to make the playoffs last year with Aaron Rodgers. That's what the league really wants. Now, Philadelphia is great with an absolute identity, and the Super Bowl window, let's be honest for Buffalo, for the time being is closed because this year Josh Allen, basically Superman, is an $18 million cap hit. You want to know what Josh Allen is next year? A $47 million cap hit. So you've wasted all this time. You have no offensive identity. You're super talented. I don't doubt that. I think you, I think you have really good people in the, the building. I think you have a smartly owned, smartly uh, GM'd franchise. You're not firing people left and right like that clown show down in Charlotte. That's not about it. But again, I look at some of these teams that are very talented and they don't have an identity. You know who does? The Niners. Philadelphia, <laughs> offensive coaches. And I think Sean McDermott has some questions to answer. It's more excuses. Eight and nine in one possession games the last two years. Josh Allen, 0 oh and 6 in overtime. I do not believe in coincidences. Sean McDermott knows mirrors have always been effective. People don't like to look at them. At least he's acknowledging he does, which I appreciate. You cannot be 0-6 in overtimes with Josh Allen. Nope. Don't want to hear about it. Nope. NFL's not rooting against the Bills. The NFL would love to have Josh Allen in a Super Bowl. Super Bowl. They would love to have Josh Allen in a Super Bowl. They would have loved to Aaron Rodgers made the playoffs last year. Stop making excuses. Start winning close games. Build an identity. Philadelphia has it. Speaking of Philadelphia, the box score, it's just funny. That's why you, you got to watch the games every snap. The box score would give you no indication Philly won the game last night. 
That's crazy. Time of possessions, uh, first downs. It was one-sided Buffalo. Outgained in four straight games. 4-0 in those games. And I don't want to hear, well, what about the Steelers? No, no, because one team has a big boy quarterback. Philadelphia can beat you six different ways. They are the major league baseball pitcher that has three to four out pitches. Um, the Dolphins can fill a stat sheet. The Eagles fill the win column. This is what they do. They can play from behind. They can smush you. They can roll uh, in a track meet, uh, shootouts. They can win ugly. They, like last night, can have an awful first half, awful, and beat a good team. Not a great team, Buffalo, but a good team. My only question about Philadelphia is, is Jalen Hurts underrated? Now, that sounds ridiculous, right? Because we talk about him all the time. But from IQ to resilience to playmaking to mobility to deep balls, when trailing in the second half or overtime this season, these numbers don't make any sense. This is, it is so hard to play this position when you're trailing. His passer rating is almost 140. He has seven passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns, and no picks. That's like better than Mahomes in the early days. That is Patrick Mahomes' territory. And Jalen Hurts is getting better. He's getting better. He did this without Lane Johnson. When he was missing Lane Johnson last year, it wasn't the same offense. Um, I mean, we have watched in the last couple of weeks – Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Jalen Hurts, you know, play one another, okay, in, in recent weeks, right? And I trust Jalen Hurts more. I know. Now, some of that's the Kansas City Chiefs' lack of star receivers. But um, I'm watching Jalen Hurts, and he th that dude is presidential. People used to make fun of me when I used to talk about, I want my quarterback to be quarterback -eal. I want him to be presidential hat on forward, buttoned up, from the way Jalen Hurts dresses, talks, podium, playing. He is so buttoned up. He is so dependable. There's a calmness with him. There's a, a, a maturity with him that last night, that game goes to overtime. Everybody in America not living in the, the Buffalo area code is like, oh yeah, Philadelphia is going to win this game. He's got the ability to be calm, without being low energy, energized without being hyper, and clutch with no anxiety. It's really something special to watch. And I mean, we've had quarterbacks not drafted in the first round. Drew Brees, second round, Brady, Russell Wilson, Joe Montana. We've had a lot of good quarterbacks that weren't top 10 picks. But you start looking at Philadelphia right now, what separates them is their ability to beat you so many ways and absolutely always be the best time on the field if the game is tied or close late. And I think it all starts with Jalen Hurts. Think about this. The last two weeks, we have seen Mahomes, Allen, and Hurts on the same field. Only one of them is 2-0 and with seven touchdowns and two fourth-quarter comebacks. Like, I, I, I'm to the point now, I always thought, yeah, hey, he's somewhere in the top ten. Should we just now put him in the allen mahomes Burrow category? Because what I'm watching from maturity to calmness, uh, uh, resiliency to IQ, everything about this kid is right. The podium, the field, fourth quarter, post game, what he says before games, when he talks about injuries. I mean, if this is where the league is going, Jalen Hurts. I, 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 my only question about Philadelphia, am I underrating this kid? Who knows? You don't have to be, uh, you know, we, we, we understand in quarterback play, it's not all linear. You're not great every Sunday. You have good halves, bad halves. It's really hard. It's really hard to be quarterback. But is there a more dependable quarterback late in games these days than Jalen Hurts? Fourth quarter, I just, he just, you know, again, I'm not saying the old line doesn't help, but he's been missing Lane Johnson. I'm not saying the running backs, the coaching, the receivers, they always have good tight ends. I'm not saying it's not a community. But, boy, he is something. He is really something in games like last night. Uh, and the, yesterday there was a lot of bad quarterback play. There was a lot of average quarterback play. There was a lot of slightly above average quarterback play. And then there's Jalen Hurts. And it's just like, wow. And it, it, that second half, the ability to control things late, crucial plays. And, again, you go to the box score, you'd think Philadelphia lost by two touchdowns. And that's the art of it.
They've got out pitches. They don't have to play great in the first few innings. They can play from behind. They can win ugly. Miami Dolphins fill a stat sheet. <laughs> Josh Allen fills a stat sheet. And I'm not knocking either because Miami's a fun watch and Josh Allen's amazing. Hurts wins games. And he wins them the way you got to win them in December and January and February. You're playing in cold weather. The margins shrink. You often trail. The pressure's intense. And that kid just gets better. That is, that, that's innate. I, I think you're, some of that stuff I don't think you can coach. Some of that stuff is just in Jalen Hurts. But how much fun is that to watch? Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.